Hello, my name is Mark Pimentel. I'm a CAM application specialist here at Hawker Systems. And in this video, I'm going to show you how you can use a ball mill to create chamfers and fillets. Generally, chamfers and fillets that are planar, you can just use a open profile or a curve feature and then a specialty tool, like a core round tool, a chamfer mill, or a taper mill. Those operations are pretty simple. What we're looking at here is three-dimensional chamfers and fillets where those tools might not be helpful. So here you want to use standard tooling like a ball mill or a bull end mill and you want to use your 3D tool paths to achieve the same feature. So we're going to see how that's done in this video. We'll start with the feature. For the three axis milling operation you want to select all the faces you have on screen. By selecting all the faces on screen you get a level of gouge checking as well. This is because that operation looks at only the surfaces that you've defined, and if you define all the surfaces, then it knows the gouge check against all the surfaces. So with all the surfaces selected, the operation that we would use here is the pattern project toolpath. And the reason being is because the pattern project operation here gives us the option of flow line. Flow line allows us to choose two curves. A curve on the top and a curve on the bottom. If we take a look at those curves, curve one, I really just chose the top edge of that fillet. So we're telling it to start the toolpath parallel to that curve and then curve two is the bottom of that fillet. And again we're telling it as it flows across that surface it should end up being parallel to that bottom curve. What you'll also notice here is I've added a little bit of an offset. That's because in the flow line pattern project, those curves that we choose act as kind of a containment area. Even though we've chosen all the surfaces on screen, we're telling it to flow a toolpath between that curve and that curve. And being that this will actually contain the toolpath, we're just gonna add a little bit of an offset to allow that ball mill to travel a little bit past the bottom edge of that surface. Um, this is a 3D toolpath. It's looking at the shape of the tool. So we want the center of the tool to kind of just go past that edge, allowing the ball end of this tool to complete machining that surface. So if you take a look at that toolpath, you can see that it is blending between the top curve and the bottom curve. It's pretty nice there. Now, one of the benefits of using this is not only the auto collision detection in the case of, let's say, if this was about to hit the floor, but if I exit out of here, I can actually just make a copy of this now. So in that copied pattern project, the feature is still all the surfaces on screen. So really, all I have to do is just change my curves. So I'll do that now. I'll just go over here. And we'll grab all these curves here. And you can, again, you can see it's projecting it to the tool plane. So it's just going to project that curve and this curve. So we'll just grab that here, like so. So we still have projected curves. I'm still going to make sure that I have a little bit of an offset on there because I want that tool to be able to wander. And if we just click OK on that, generate that toolpath. And with that, we got the same sort of functionality. I have now blended a toolpath from the top curve to the bottom curve. Even though it was an open edge, it's still blending it between the two. And it was simple enough to just hold the control key and make a copy. So one of the benefits of using the 3D toolpath is because it's looking at the entire part, we just need to change what we're looking at in terms of the flow. So this is an easy way to do all the chamfers and fillets on your part and just keep copying and pasting the operation. Now that is the three axis mill operation. It is somewhat limited though because it's only letting you choose the curves on the top and the bottom and sometimes the chamfers and fillets that we're machining aren't that simple. Sometimes the curves uh, they don't exist, sometimes we don't really like the way they're flowing, maybe it's a translated part and the edge somehow didn't translate well as either. So let's take a look at the multi-axis mill operation and how we can achieve the same functionality. So still using a ball end mill what I'm doing here is I'm still using flow line between curves, but I actually have the ability to use surfaces as well. So if we take a look at the same toolpath but using surfaces, essentially all I have to do here is choose 
that top surface, and that bottom surface. And here, I don't actually have to give it any kind of offsets because in the multi-axis mill operation, it's looking at the contact point between the tool and the surfaces that I selected. And here, I just chose that filleted surface. If we take a look at the feature selected there, it is really just that one surface that represents the fillet. So this is kind of a more of a detailed way, more focused way of doing your 3D toolpath, and it gives you more functionality as what you can use to flow between the top and the bottom of that chamfer or that fillet. Additionally, it has the other option of not just doing a one-way cut, but if we zoom in a little bit, we'll see that there are no connections between those passes. That's because I'm using spiral. So this can even be more of an accurate surfacing toolpath because as it does spiral, it's keeping the tool down. And that constant Z-force makes it a much more accurate finishing cut. Now, because we chose just that one surface, we're not getting the same level of gouge checking that we did in the three-axis mill operation. Not to say that we don't have it, we do have a little bit of an extra one here because in the gouge check section, not only can I check against the tool gouging the surfaces, but I have the extra ability here to do the holder, the shank, and the non-cutting portion. So I do have some additional functionality in here. So really the difference between the two is in the multi-axis mill operation, I have more controls. The drawback is because I have more controls, I have to take more control. I have to actually plug in these parameters. But generally when you're doing this sort of work, you're probably looking for that detail the only thing that uh, that you need to be aware of here is that in the axis control, I'm limiting it to the three axis. This is what's turning this into a three axis operation. If you don't have this functionality, you can give us a call and we can see if we can update your license to include this functionality. Any questions on this or anything else, just give us a call at the main tech line found on our website. If you like these videos, please like and subscribe and thanks for watching.